Leaving Atlanta by Tayari Jones is based on the events of the Atlanta child murders, which took place during the early 1980s. The book is split into three sections and taken from the points of view of three different children, Tasha, Rodney, and Octavia. Tasha is a typical fifth grader. She struggles to maintain popularity and the acceptance of her friends. Her parents begin their separation during this time, and through this, she struggles with impending maturity. She tells her little sister that there is a secret word that stops the kidnappers in their tracks. Her, yet her father moves back in when they escalate. Like her other classmates, Tasha's world is suddenly rocked by trauma. She begins to learn how different she and her classmates really are. Who was that boy you were talking to? He's in my class at school. How old is he? Eleven, Tasha said. Eleven times what? Daddy asked over the clink of the turn signal. I don't know how old he is, Tasha admitted. She didn't know how old he was, but she was pretty sure how old he wasn't. Was that enough to make it a lie? Look, Ladybug, Daddy said, looking at her. They were at a red light. Stay away from that boy. He ain't nothing but trouble. I know you think I'm an old man, but I used to be a boy myself, so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, Tasha said, hoping that her cooperation would end the discussion. Daddy said under his breath, That boy will be lucky to see the other side of eighteen. Tasha had heard him, but pretended not to. She climbed into her yellow and blue bed with the air freshener in her hand. Tasha's section is written in third-person narration, giving the feeling that her viewpoint is also that of her class. Rodney is outcast by all. His classmates and family see him as a finicky boy. His hyper-masculine father balks and beats him for not being manly enough while his mother secretly completes his homework in hopes that Rodney will finally be at the top of the class. He may adhere to the five-finger discount and appear stork to his classmates, yet Rodney is just as scared as everyone else, and protects his sister above all. He's not challenged, Mother says in your defense. Challenged? Spittle flies from his lips. This boy's problem is he never had to pick cotton. When you pick cotton, you don't sit at the, out there and see if you can be challenged by the cotton. You don't bring your bag in empty at the end of the day and tell the white man that the cotton didn't challenge you. You just pick the goddamn cotton. Daddy, sister says. You said a bad word. He apologizes, kissing the top of her lovely head. You stare at your plate, plot murder, say nothing. Father will beat you tonight. The tiny column of letters defacing your report card mandates that you pull his belt from its loop and swing it hard. His pants will fall below his waist, revealing clean white undershorts as he swings at your shins, forcing you to do a, a dance to a humiliating jig. There is a boy in the special ed class whose legs are immobilized by braces of reinforced metal. Father's belt coils around your left thigh. The buckle collides with your knee. You wish you were a special boy whose legs could not move and could not dance to the rhythm of the legs. You have to learn to get your lesson, he says. You cry despite your resolve to be impassive. Never going to amount to nothing. Each word is accentuated by a whack. You recall Octavia hurling rocks at Leon's head. What would she do if she were in your place? Then you remember that people say that she has no father. The envy leaves a taste in your mouth that is bitter as blood. Father is exhausted now. He takes air in big gulps as he fastens his belt around his trousers. Both of your faces shine with salt water. Let's not let this happen again, he says, opening your bedroom door. Mother is in the hallway. Did you hurt him? No, father reassures her. I hurt his feelings, that's all. Rodney's section is written in second-person narration. Through this, we get to see what the outcasts of the class see and feel. Octavia, or Sweet Pea, as those close to her know her as, is much more self-possessed than her classmates. While her mother's incessant lies have often sent her into confusion and her classmates taunt her about her darkness and outgrown clothes, she has a tilted view of the kidnappings. Octavia understands their dangers fully, but when the kidnappings hit closer to home than expected, Octavia must decide whether or not she should take steps to better her life out of the projects. 
Octavia's section is told in first-person narration. Through this, we get to see her view as an individual, as well as her inter interactions with other outcasts in her class. Octavia struggles with identity and isolation, yet for her, leaving Atlanta may be life-changing in more ways than one. She put the telephone down. Octavia Yvette Fuller, where the hell have you been? Whatever words I had disappeared because my mama didn't cuff at me. I was at the park, I said, but that was only half of it. What happened to your face? Mama's voice was high like Darlita's. Nothing, I told her fast. I just fell, that's all. I was up at the park. At the park? Mama grabbed me by my shoulders and shook me hard. Don't you ever go off like that again. I worked too hard to have to be worrying about you. I didn't know if you were kidnapped, somewhere raped, laying dead in a ditch. Her fingers mashed my skin like dough, or with some boy. But mama, it wasn't like that. Then she hit me across the face. I tried to pull away, but she still had me hard by the shoulders. She put her face right up to mine. The white part of her eyes was crisscrossed with red. Mama's breath in my face was strong like a whole pack of cools. She shook me again, my head flopped back and forth like I was made of rubber. How many children got to die before you learned to bring your ass home? She slapped me again and had her hand back to give me another one. I opened my mouth to holler so maybe somebody might hear me and save me, but Miss Darlene came busting in, turning on the light. The book is centered around the trauma and events of the Atlanta child murders, but it looks at each character's story in a different sense. Not only do we witness how such an event changes the African-American community, but the children's realization that they are, in fact, vulnerable.